Thanks, Alan. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this American Acupuncture Council webinar. My name is Matt Callison. My esteemed colleague, Brian Lau, could not be able to make it. He's teaching right now. There is a scheduling conflict. So I will be with you for this next uh, 25, 30 minutes or so discussing a topic that I thought was really quite important. Um, it's, it's something that we discuss in the Sports Medicine Acupuncture Certification Program in the pelvic floor aspect, module two. The point is do one. And in my opinion, it's really quite underutilized. I've been doing a lot of research on it just because of the amazing results that you can get when you use do one in combination with other points. Um, this is also gonna be something that I'll be discussing in the symposium that we're having, the Pacific uh, Sports and Acupuncture, uh, Orthopedic Acupuncture Symposium coming up in San Diego. March 30th through April 3rd. It's a, it's a big myofascial point. It makes huge, massive myofascial changes. And it's a point that I highly encourage for people to, uh, to go back and use again. Many people think about deep do one is for rectal problems or prostatitis or hemorrhoids or something like that. But I highly, highly encourage for people to think about using this point for low back problems, especially chronic low back problems. In the SMAC program, it's really quite common that uh, people will have low back pain since it's, it's such a common injury. I'll call one of the students up to the front and we'll talk about their low back pain. It could be a yaw yawn syndrome. It could be sacroiliac joint pain. It could be anything that's affecting their low back. And I'll needle do one, take the needle out, and then reassess, they may walk around a little bit and it's often, usually in the 90 percentile, reduced substantially. Now, of course, it's gonna end up, come, that pain is gonna end up coming back just because we've only treated one point for about 30 seconds. But the reason why I do that is to show the, the group that do one is a substantial point to use and it makes big myofascial changes, an excellent point to use with other acupuncture points for low back pain. So with that, why don't we go ahead and get started then. Let's get into the, this first slide here. So again, I'm encouraging using do one into low back treatment pain protocols because of its massive ability to make big changes into the myofascia. All right. So to start with this, we're going to talk about the factual continuum. This is going to be some text that's coming from this article and you'll see the reference there at the very bottom. Through a scientific review and a, and a comparison of anatomy text, a factual continuum exists between the abdominal wall, the pelvis, being the pelvic floor as well, and lumbar wall, and such knowledge can improve the understanding of referred pain pathophysiology. Now, research has shown that deep fascial layers are well innervated and capable of transmitting transmitting mechanical forces from a distance. This is outstanding work from Helene Langevin in 2002, and she continues to, um, to uh, publish incredible articles on the efficacy of acupuncture. So what she is saying is that with mechanical stimulation, like an acupuncture needle, there can be a transmitting of mechanical forces, a signaling along these myofascial planes for some distance just like what our founding fathers 2000 years ago knew about manipulating chi and having it actually travel along the channels and the collaterals. This concept of fascial anatomical continuity may have important clinical implications for the treatment of pelvic pain or even lumbar injuries. I thought that was really quite significant. Later in the article, it states, lower back symptoms might find their origin and explanation from pelvic floor disorders. This new concept could improve the treatment of chronic pain and could lead to an important enhancement of current anatomical knowledge and therapies. Um, they're being really pretty safe by saying the word could there. From my clinical experience, it is definitely a very important thing to be able to treat the pelvic floor 
including do one with low back injuries because of the fascial continuum in addition to the communication between the pelvic floor, the abdomen, the multifidi, and the respiratory diaphragm. More on that in just a tick. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, some more work of Helene Langevin's. Now, because the structure and composition of fascial connective tissue is responsible, is responsive to mechanical stimuli, we propose that acupuncture plays a key role in mechanical transduction signaling. And that's what acupuncture is. It's a signaling system. Mechanical transduction signaling and the integration of several physiological functions. The mechanical stimulation of connective tissue generated by the acupuncture needle manipulation could transmit a mechanical signal to sensory nerves. And as we well know, it absolutely does. Acupuncture needle stimulation that results in the spreading of collagenous matrix deformation and cell activation along fascial connective tissue planes may mediate acupuncture effects remote from the acupuncture needle site. So spreading of collagenous matrix deformation, that's basically needle technique. Inserting the needle and lifting and thrusting being one of them and how that can propagate a signal along myofascial planes as we know them now, what our founding fathers talk about as the channels and the collaterals. So Helene Langevin's work is pretty outstanding with all of this. So what we're looking at right now is that we have a connection of the myofascia and also of the pelvis, of the abdomen, of the low back, and also the respiratory diaphragm. Could we actually go one slide back, please? I wanna show you something. All right, so in this image, and I know the, the text in there is really quite unclear. Um, that's actually from the article itself. So it was unclear in the article. And like I said, the reference is right there. I don't have the ability to, to point. I don't have a pointer here. So if you guys could follow me along here, that would be great. On the right-hand side, you can see the abdomen, and it's a greenish turquoise lettering around the abdomen. So that's going to be scarpa's fascia. Scarpa's fascia is going to be part of the abdomen. Now, that green line goes all the way underneath in toward REN1 and DO1 area. Now you can see DO1, that'll end up being the ACL. So if you take a look at the uh, reddish looking text, more on the left-hand side, you'll see the letters ACL. ACL is the acronym for anacoxygeal ligament, which is the tissue that we're gonna be discussing here in just a little bit, that is at DO1. So you can see here with this representation is that each one of these fascial layers from the pelvis to the abdomen to the back and going all the way up to the respiratory diaphragm communicate with one another. And this is the important thing is to take away from this is looking at as an acupuncturist, what points can we use for low back pain? It's just not putting needles into the low back. What else did that, what other tissues does that low back actually communicate with pelvic floor, abdomen, respiratory diaphragm. So getting that entire core structure to communicate with one another using mechanical stimuli of acupuncture along myofascial planes and mechanical transduction signaling. In other words, balancing chi and blood moving through the channels in order to be able to decrease pain. All right, let's go ahead and skip a couple slides here and we can see where it says core stability communication in the channels, please. All right, good. All right, so this is uh, something that I, a slide that I took out of the module two pelvic floor discussion. And I think it's really quite important just to re help to reinforce the communication between the pelvic floor and the other structures. Studies show a co coordinated strategy in which all abdominal muscles, pelvic floor, and the respiratory diaphragm are co-activated in order to control the interdominal pressure and fascial tension. They work together. There's communication with all of these. They work together. Research shows that he, so that should be the stimulation of efferent nerves to the pelvic floor muscles. So when the pelvic floor muscles were activated, created a reflex of co-contraction of the respiratory diaphragm and also the transverse abdominis, showing a coordinated communication between these structures. So again, with transverse abdominis often being very, very weak in cases of low back pain, how important it is to be able to 
treat pelvic floor, the low back, the abdomen, as well as the diaphragm. And many times acupuncturists are, like for example, treating the Wato Jaji points, you're gonna be stimulating the multifidi, and the multifidi interdigitates itself with the transverse abdominis. We could be treating the diaphragm through UB17, and in the SMAC program, we talk about stomach 20 as being an influential point for the diaphragm, especially on the right-hand side. Then also in the pelvic floor, there's many different points that we can use to affect pelvic floor muscles. And in this particular presentation, I'm gonna emphasize treating do one because it is a core point, a foundational point for the do my, and it does affect many of the mild fascias that we're discussing. So let's go to the next slide and let's get right into the anacoxygeal ligament, which is the tissue of the anacoxygeal ligament. Well, tissue of do one. So next slide, please. Oop, I think we went too far. Sorry about that. Can you go back? Yeah, thank you. All right, so the anacoxygeal ligament is also referred to as the postnatal septum. You'll see that in some of the research paper, papers. Um, anacoxygeal raphe, which actually has its own definition, and also the anacoxygeal body. So you'll see all those different terms um, speaking about the anacoxygeal ligament. Now the ACL, that's what we're gonna refer to from now on. The ACL can be described as a myofibrous thick connective tissue located in the midline of the body in the floor of the pelvis, right? The ACL connects as a raphe tissue with bilateral slings of the levator ani. So a raphe tissue is going to be where you have a communication, you have a, a tissue on one side, tissue on the other side, connected by this tendinous connective tissue or also a raphe. For example, the lateral raphe in the low back right next to the quadratus lumborum that will then be like the segue tissue, a raphe tissue that connects into the abdomen. In this particular case, it's looking at the anacoxygeal ligament where do one is as a raphe tissue where the bilateral slings, the levator ani, in particular, the iliococcygeus, the pubococcygeal, and the puborectalis muscles go in and interdigitate right into that anacoxygeal ligament where do one is located. In addition, the coccygeus muscle also has fibers that interdigitate with the ACL, which is really quite important. The coccygeus muscle is something that we need on the SMAC program all the time for sacroiliac joint problems. So the combination of using DO1 with the coccygeus helps to reinforce that treatment. All right, so on this image here, if you can see on the right-hand side, you see the letters ACL, that would be the anacoxygeal ligament. So you see this CO there, that's gonna end up being your coccyx right next to the CO is the COM. That's gonna be your coccygeus muscle. That muscle of the pelvic floor is going in and attaching underneath the coccyx and it's gonna interdigitate itself with the ACL. All right, so then you have to the left, almost in the middle, of this image is the LA, so that would be your levator ani. So those fibers right there are going to be your pubococcygeal, your puborectalis, and your ilococcygeus, like I said, which interdigitate with the ACL where do one is located. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. The, an the anacoxygeal ligament has two distinct layers to it, which is something that you can actually try to think about when you're needling into it. That helps with the depth aspect of it. So the anacoxygeal ligament with these two distinct layers that connect to various fascial layers, including the posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia, very important because the thoracolumbar fascia is often where pain will be generated around the yaoyan region and also P. gun region. So the anacoxygeal ligament can connect with this posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia, as well as internally to the endopelvic fascia that's going to surround the pelvic bowl and the regional organs. Now, this endopelvic fascia has links to the transversalis fascia, which is part of the transverse abdominis. It's all connected, and this is what my point is. So number one, the superficial fibrous band. This is again, we're talking about the two different layers here. So the most superficial one. Superficial fibrous band originating from the fibers of the external anal sphincter or the EAS, right? So we know about that. 
and running upwards to the coccyx is going to be your superficial ACL. So when you're actually palpating this, you're going to be feeling that superficial ACL with a deeper palpation. You'll be pressing into the second layer, which we're going to be getting into in just a second. So this superficial layer joins the fascial ligamentous attachments on the posterior aspect of the coccyx and sacrum. So you can think about that when you have a sacroiliac joint problem because it's going to be continuous, this fascia continuous from the superficial layer going toward the sacroiliac joint. And as we talked about earlier, by stimulating with a mechanical transduction stimuli or needle technique, a very light needle technique because it's going to be do one, it will still be communicating with other aspects of that fascia. The superficial ACL joins the sacred tuberous ligament, which is going to be another guy wire for the sacrum, excellent for sacroiliac joint problems. And it continues into the glute maximus, which is a major stabilizer for the low back and posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia. Extremely important. So let's now go to uh, the other slide, please. Let's talk about the second one. This is now the deeper layer. So the second layer is a deep fiber, fibrous band. It's going to be it's going to be thicker than the superficial layer. Originates from the anterior periosteum of the coccyx, right? So the anterior aspect of the coccyx. The superficial one is going more to the superficial aspect of the coccyx, which then can go ahead and spread. Let's see if I can do this a little bit better here, right? So then can go ahead and spread along the ligamentous tissue, the glute maximus, and into the thoracolumbar fascia. Let's go back to do one. Now the deeper part of the anacoxygeal ligament is attaching to the underside of the coccyx right here, the presacral fascia, and that presacral fascia directly links into the endopelvic fascia. So let's look at this slide here and we'll talk about it a little more. All right, so then this layer is referred to as the deep ACL. The deep ACL directly connects to the endopelvic fascia and the bilateral slings of the levator anicoxygeus. Yep. Yeah. All right. So like I said, the pelvic floor is going to be interdigitating with that anicoxygeal ligament. This deeper layer is going to be communicating with the fascia that surrounds the pelvic bowl, holds the organs in place, the endopelvic fascia. Do one is a remarkable point in its ability to communicate with lots of different tissues. All right, let's go to the next slide if we could. Let's talk about the function of this ligament. Now, in this histological study, the anacoxygeal ligament was found to be abundant in smooth muscle and elastin fibers. So what does that mean to us? Well, when an acupuncture needle is going in to do one, you're now tapping into the autonomic nervous system because of the smooth muscle. And because it have, has elastin fibers, we want to make sure that those elastin fibers are going to actually be up to par, that they're going to have still their recoil. I mean, much of the uh, skin in our face has elastin and with age, obviously it starts to droop. But if we can be able to stimulate these elastin fibers and then provide exercises, for example, Kegel exercises to help to restore the tensegrity of the anacoxygeal ligament, that's going to go a long way in the successful results with low back pain in addition to lower jowl disharmonies. So during activity, the anacoxygeal ligament will involuntarily shorten and tighten. It adapts to the movement and is responsible for absorbing and transmitting forces generated during movement. And that's going to be within that pelvic floor. It also functions to support the pelvic viscera. And when the levator ani contracts, the ACL, that should be ACL, pulls the vagina and rectum forward to maintain urinary and fecal continence. Weakness of the levator ani causes sagging of the anacoxygeal ligament, which therefore decreases the ACL support of the pelvic floor, which is going to be very important. This sagging increases the probability of urinary incontinence and constitutes a predisposition to pelvic organ prolapse. I was at a, uh, a gathering of people, and this was in New Zealand, and we were talking about um, some different things that people had. And this woman, woman said that she just had a childbirth, uh, gave birth to a child and it was about a year and a half ago. And she said she was still getting some urinary incontinence with that. And I didn't have any needles. There was not any acupuncturist where she lived. So I just asked her to go ahead and stimulate do one numerous times per day when she could in privacy. 
And she emailed me back a week later and she said how remarkable it was um, that her urinary incontinence completely changed and she's much better. Just that's just with um, acupoint pressure at do one. So again, it's a very, very incredible point. It's integrity, do one's integrity is vital in defecation and maintains continence and sexual function. The anacoxygeal ligament is of clinical significance as it contributes to maintaining the integrity of the pelvic floor muscles as a dynamic anchor for stabilization. Okay. All right, so let's get into the actual location of do one. Um, in the acupuncture books, it's, there's two different places that I have seen it located. One location is just underneath the tip of the coccyx. That's where some people will put it. I think the better place to put it, and this is where actually you'll see uh, more of this description, is halfway between the tip of the coccyx and also the anus. Are the indications common in acupuncture books, diarrhea, bloody stools, hemorrhoids, so like rectal problems or lower jaw problems, prolapse of the rectum, absolutely, because the anacoxygeal ligament will also be prolapsed. Uh, constipation is a possibility there, prostatitis. And this was interesting. Not all books will have pain in the lower back, um, but some books do, which is quite interesting. Um, also, you can use this to help with the shen in manic disorders. Traditional actions, as we know, it's going to regulate the dumai. Um, it's also going to regulate the renmai, resolves damp heat. That would be part of the diarrhea and such and it calms the mind. It is an anchoring point. As we know, it's a low connecting point of the Dumai and for traditional acupuncturists, low connecting points, we know helps to open up the channel, right? So when there is pain in the channel, we use a low connecting point and that helps to open up the channel, decreases pain. It's also the crossing point, of course, Dumai with Renmai. So it helps to be able to regulate the yin, uh, the master of the yin and the master of the yang. There's a crossing point for the kidney, which makes sense because the kidney is part of that pelvic floor, influential on the pelvic floor. It's also a crossing point of the gallbladder, which is I found really interesting. And there are some fascial correlations between uh, the pelvic floor and the tensor fascia lata. So think about it when somebody is coming in with L5 dermatome sciatic pain and you do a straight leg raise and you do see that it's actually going to be coming from the low back and it's traversing down the dermatome of the L5, which would be your gallbladder channel. This would be an excellent point to use in addition to your Wato Jaji points of L4, L5, tensor fascia lata, gallbladder 31, gallbladder 34. Again, do one would be like an opening point, an anchoring point, a signaling point for the rest of these points. Do one is an anchoring, it's a great point. Uh, do one's a starting point of the do my, obviously, as we know. And so we know that starting points are very powerful where the kidney yang energy emanates outward, extending itself along the do my. So since the do my controls the yang of the body, as we know, this point, as the name implies, promotes the body strength and vigor. Mm -hmm. All right, so personally, I like to use um, acupuncture to do one when they're in a prone position. I know many people were taught to use in a sideline position. That can work as well. What's unfortunate about the sideline position is that you're going to be limited to what points you can include with it because the person's going to be in a lateral recumbent position. Whereas the person's going to be prone, um, it lifts the pelvis up. Using pelvic blocks, if you're familiar with using pelvic blocks, it works extremely well helps to take away uh, pelvic fascia tension just by reducing the anterior and the posterior pelvic tilts. If you don't have that, then just a pillow underneath the pelvis will help substantially. This is gonna be something that you also wanna to talk to your patient about that this is a point that you wanna needle. I find that if you ask the patient to palpate it themselves, they start to understand where you're gonna be going with that. Um, you can use some information if you like from this seminar to help to build your case why you want to go ahead and treat do one for this person's chronic low back pain um, it's always a good idea to have this conversation uh, before you actually start needling them just in case they need to uh, use the restroom and prepare themselves or the area for cleanliness all right so then we want to locate and treat in the prone position using pelvic blocks is always a really good idea what I'd like to do is to use this as one of the first points. 
So I'll cross fiber the anacoxygeal ligament. I'll go ahead and locate the coccyx, locate the coccyx, and then find the anacoxygeal ligament. I'll cross fiber it so I can feel left and right sides, right? And then go ahead and press directly right into the anacoxygeal ligament and feel for the most tension. Now, the most tension usually is going to be going superior toward the head, or you can angle it ever so slightly underneath toward the coccyx. Now, some people go this way. Some people go up into this way to get really get that presacral fascia. And I think that can work. When I've done that, I've caught it, I've caused sharp pain more than twice. So that's something you may want to consider with that. I think we're actually starting to miss too maybe some of the depth of the two layers of the anacoxygeal ligament. So going in toward the head or slightly upward, I find actually makes the best myofascial changes with this. All right, so perpendicular needle insertion, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half is gonna to be totally fine. And the reason why is because going from the skin then you've got subcutaneous tissue, and that's going to be your superficial and your deep fascia, which is highly innervated in that region. Once you get past that, then you'll start to feel the actual layer of that of the ACL. From there, go ahead and insert into the ACL, into the thickest, most tender spot. Okay, so cautions advised, do not needle past the ACL or an anterior direction to the close proximity of the rectum. This is something that um, you have to be going way too fast for doing that. So you wanna make sure that your palpation tells you where the ACL is and what's the depth of it. Going an inch or an inch and uh, an inch and a quarter is totally fine with most people, not a problem whatsoever. All right, so let's look at do one point combinations with this. Um, these are just suggestions, you guys. Because of its potential to communicate with many pertinent structures affecting the low back, do one's an excellent point to combine with other low back, groin, thigh, and abdominal acupuncture points. So the following is going to be some point combinations to choose from. Uh, the piriformis motor point is going to be excellent to use. Uh, usually, that usually will have that bilateral for sacroiliac joint problems. Um, it's part of the posterior support for the pelvic floor. So do one with the piriformis is useful. Uh, do one with the coccygeus because those fibers do communicate with one another. That can be extremely useful as well. Um, personally, I don't use piriformis and coccygeus at the same time. Uh, it's just a little bit too much for the patient. It just depends on what we're actually trying to treat. Um, extra point yaoyan, which we're treating quite often with low back pain. Um, that comes in quite a bit with uh, iliac crest syndrome or yaoyan syndrome, that pain that's right on top of that iliac crest. I'm um, using do one with yaoyan because there's a direct communication between the superficial layer of the anacoxygeal ligament and the posterior layer of the thoracolumbar fascia where yaoyan lives. The sacrotuberous ligament, again, being a guy wire for the sacrum, useful in sacroiliac joint pain. Um, that also connects with do one. So do one and the sacred tuberous ligament is a nice combination as well. Do one with gallbladder 29 can also be useful. You can still needle gallbladder 29 in the prone position with blocks on. It'll just be more of an oblique type of angle. And of course, when you've turned the person over and you've already treated um, do one in the same treatment, you can treat uh, rectus abdominis, the uh, transverse abdominis, also the obliques because they help to um, also signal with do one. So it's a really nice combination um, is do one as your, as your founding point in addition to the rest of the points because they all communicate. All right, so this was a, a very quick webinar. Um, this hopefully enlightens you a little bit and excites you to be able to use do one and and to communicate with your patients why you wanna be able to use do one. There are some references, I believe, on the next slide that you're welcome to go ahead and collect there. This is just something that um, I'm happy to go ahead and do. Um, there's a lot more elaboration with needling do one and practice um, that's gonna end up being in the SMAC program, but also like I was saying, it's gonna be part of my lecture on March 31st, 2023 in the SOAS uh, Symposium. 
uh, that lecture is going to end up being big points that move myofascia that change makes myofascial changes and do one is definitely within that category. So thanks you guys really, really appreciate your time. I hope this was really useful for you. And uh, I want to thank the American Acupuncture Council for having me. This was really great. And I believe that's it for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks everybody.